Blessings on another week. We are here once again, giving thanks to God for this day, this month, um, two weeks into Advent already, hard to believe, but here we are. So let us gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. As I get this up, it looks like my audio and video is not syncing. I apologize, just pretend that I'm speaking in Spanish and that it's dubbed over. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. As we continue our journey, Places Along the Way, by Micah and Martin Marty, today we are at Mount Tabor, the Mount of Transfiguration, I believe. They all have so many different names, I sometimes forget what their names are. But our verse today is Luke, chapter 9, chapter 9. Let me get one. Luke chapter 9, verse 28. Yep, transfiguration, I guessed right. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, James, and John with him and went up to the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes began, became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became, became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, as the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, this is my son whom I have chosen, listen to me. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. Mount Tabor or Tabor, either way. We, can, we will call this high point Mount Tabor. The Bible does not name the place, but at times it is convenient to follow tradition and tourist guides when fixing an image in the mind. On the, one hand, on the other hand, any mountain in one's imagination will do for recalling what happens. This craggy, build, brilliant stop seems out of place, at least for a moment, to anyone following Jesus in his march to Jerusalem and the cross. These are days for shadows, scepters, darknesses. Now suddenly there is an event called Jesus's transfiguration. According to the stories, his face and figure were changed. His clothes, again according to Luke, became dazzling white as they were to be in his resurrection. However shall we endure such brightness, such luster in the shadows of this journey to Jerusalem and its cross? What will become of the symbolic sackcloth and ashes our soul should wear if we get too close to the dazzling aura of Jesus? If this is to be a serious pilgrimage with him, will not this moment on a mountaintop breed illusion and confusion? We get answers. 
We endure and enjoy the brightness because our eyes regain, remain eager for a vision of the glorious Lord whose light is never completely hidden. Sackcloth and ashes are not the only wardrobe and cosmetics to be worn when we are on a journey that is already touched by Jesus' light. This is no diversion or interruption at all. It is a God-planned part of the pilgrimage. In it we see and in its story we hear the promise of the God of light. Three witnesses on the scene speak for us today. It is good for us to be here, to be astonished by the voice from, from above bidding, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. God of light, we join those who seek for signs of the glory and we listen for the sounds of endorsement. Graced anew, we can readily face the darkness that still threatens. Amen. I love, this is such a, a nice marked passage in Jesus' story. Um, we, of course, do it at the end of Epiphany. Usually, well, I shouldn't say, of course. Normally, we have it at the end of Epiphany, in which we then turn our face to Lent and the cross, which is what Christ does as well in the story of the Transfiguration. He's doing his ministry. He hits his mountaintop. He brings the, the top three disciples up there, the inner circle, and everything is changed. And they want to stay there. They want to stay in that, that brightness, that glory. They don't want to go back into the valley, into the, you know, the valley of the shadow of death, to the cross. They don't understand it. They've been told the predictions of death have happened, but they, they don't understand. They don't understand what Jesus must go through in order for us to have that resurrection light. And of course, the theophany, which is a fancy word for God speaking out loud. There's the, the baptism where the heavens open and the dove comes and you hear the voice of God. This is my son, the beloved. Um, and now you hear, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. You hear that little tag on, listen to him. It's interesting that, that, I mean, we have to listen to God and we're commanded to do it. Partly, usually when you think about a command, there's two reasons that it's for your own self-preservation. It's for your preservation of life, for sustaining you. It's important news. And so it's that cue to this is important to listen to this. It's not just white noise. It's not something to be forgotten. It's not something to be passed by. It is important things you'll be hearing. And the other, because we don't, we don't listen. We kind of, you know, zone out. We, we get distracted. We try to listen to other, you know, hedge our bets, listen to other voices as well. And God is saying, just stop it. Stop sampling everything and listen to Christ. Listen to the word made flesh who is shining as bright as can be right now, as bright as lightning, it says, and is about to go to the cross. And, you know, it doesn't say that, but you know, he sets his face towards Jerusalem. We often want to stay in those moments where it's bright and shiny and there's clarity for a moment. And when the clarity of the moment leads us to something that's hard or challenging. We feel that energy, I think, to go and um, a sense of rightness and a call, but also that like, do I have to leave this comfort, a comfortable place, this safe place, this place of glory? Um, it's hard to make that first step in the right direction. The disciples sure don't wanna do it but Jesus is. And of course this text is, has Moses and Elijah in it. So the law and the prophets are there and Jesus is as the gospel. So the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets is, is about to happen. And while they're not saying, listen, you know, they're not, they're listening, but they're not sharing it yet. They're not speaking it yet um, until it has been fulfilled. So some of the other things in here, the in the midst of uh, our moments of grief, 
our moments of worry, that sackcloth and ashes when we are in lament. We are touched by Christ's light even in those moments. And that's, I think, something to hold on to today for this. The light's always there for us. Christ is always in our light, our life, <laughs> shining his light of glory, of life, of sustenance, of, of hope of power, of might, of lordship. I mean, all of that breaks into despair, breaks into grief and mourning and being lost, and it shows us a way. And it's present with us in that. So in a sense, this is saying that no matter where you are, whether it's on a mountaintop and you don't want to leave that mountaintop experience and go back into the real world <laughs> or whether you're in the valley and you are in sackcloth and ashes. Maybe not literally anymore. We don't tend to do that. Um, at least on, in our culture here, there's still cultures, of course, that dress completely um, in mourning in those times. We put ashes on our forehead for Lent. We do our, our moments of this. But no matter where you are, no matter how you've covered up your grief, no matter how you've tried to trudge along or you are immobilized in either the mountaintop or in the valley, you've already been touched by Christ's light. It's already there for you. And it will be what you need in the next part of your journey. And that mean not journey towards righteousness, God does that for you. But the journey of life, life brings us valleys and life brings us mountains and brings us pilgrimages of trying to find meaning. But the light shines in all of those times. And what God's reminding us today is in all of those moments, in the valleys, in the mountaintops, listen to what God's saying to you listen to it truly listen to it let it soak into your bones let it be held in your heart and and know that in those words in that presence of god light shines hope shines god guides you god rejoices with you god mourns with you god is there in all of that, I think it's God's light saying that your human experiences matter. And also the defeat of that which oppresses you, sin, death, and the devil is also matters to Christ too. So the daily life, and then also those cosmic realities of alpha and omega of, glor of that glory on that level also belongs to God. So God of light, we join with those who look for signs of the glory and not our glory. This is looking for God's glory. And we see, we listen for the sounds of endorsement that he's the real deal. God is saying he's the real deal. Listen to this. Don't listen to all the other things that don't have the endorsement of God. Graced anew, we can readily face the darkness that still threatens. There's still and always will be darkness until Christ comes again. And we've been graced to turn our face that way too and shine the light of Christ in the darkness. That's something that God has given you the ability to do, to be a light in the darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome it. Once again, be still and know that I am God, whether you are on the mountaintop or in the valley, God is there with you. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn and bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for bringing us to those moments of glory of your presence, of your command to listen, Lord. And then also coming with us into the challenging, grieving times in which we wonder where, 
where hope is and you bring it to us. May we continue to be, to be graced anew by your presence and by your presence with others as well in our life. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We ask you to continue to be with those in need this day, those suffering from COVID-19, those whose other health ailments and challenges are also coming to a head right now and needing care and doctoring and support. We ask for forgiveness to come as it's needed to create new opportunities and life in many, many ways. For the gifts of relationship with others, we rejoice. May you continue to bless us with one another and may you continue to find ways to bring us together in the midst of COVID restrictions to sustain and uplift, to, to bring the necessary life to one another. For the communion of faith in your church, we pray. Thank you for gingerbread house Zoom sessions with kids and wreath making um, remotely and devotions and worship and Advent and all the ways that you are in our life and in our community. Continue to bind us together, Lord, in many and wondrous ways. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Trump and Vice President Pence. We pray for President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris. We pray for the continued certification of this process. And as it come, goes forward, we ask you to guide and bless those who are responsible in these times. We ask you to be with us in Washington and all the other states in our union as well, as they continue to meet the challenges of our time. May you help them care for those who have been entrusted into their, their areas of responsibility. And may they they be given the guidance needed in this time of challenge. For people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare or COVID-19, we pray. Today especially, we lift up Pearl Harbor. We lift up those who enlisted before, after that. We lift up those who saw horrific things during war and fought for freedom and came back. And those who didn't come back and the families that were impacted by both circumstances. We give thanks for the vocation of soldier and for family of soldier. But we also ask for you to work for peace in our midst. And we hope for the day there will be no more war. There'll be no more strife and that your peace will be in all of our hearts. For all who work for peace and international harmony, we give thanks. And for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we ask for your endurance for them. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, we rejoice, and we ask you to continue to be with Creator, Lutheran Church and Preschool in this time. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us, whether we're on the mountaintop or the valley, and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.